You know, we could all use some encouragement. And I've got some good news for you. Welcome to 5 Minutes with Mark. Greetings, friends. Welcome back to 5 Minutes with Mark. We're picking up the story in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, at verse 28. Remember, Jesus has just cast out this demon that the nine disciples who were in the valley weren't able to cast out. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Then they departed from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know it, for he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and after he is killed he will rise the third day. But they did not understand this saying, and were afraid to ask him. Isn't that an interesting little set of bookends? We'll stop right there. The disciples ask him, why couldn't we do it? And he says, eh, because you were using the wrong resources. That cast out demons thing that I gave you, that authority and power, it's not a magic spell. You can't go in and say the magic words and poof, everything works. It takes spiritual effort, prayer and fasting. Sometimes you're going to run into a problem that's going to be deeper than your immediate talents and abilities. Then he leaves. They get up and they leave that area. They go through Galilee. And he's trying to be quiet. He doesn't want people to know. He, he doesn't want a crowd because he's really trying to get something over to these guys. And we have it recorded you know, once here. But I believe he's saying it in many ways and he's saying it over and over and over again. He's really trying to make these guys understand what's going to happen. The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men. I'm going to be betrayed. They're going to kill me. And I'll rise the third day. This is what's about to happen. He's telling them point blank, this is what's about to happen. And they're going, yeah, okay, sure, right. I don't understand at all. But they're afraid to ask him. They're perfectly comfortable asking, well, why couldn't we cast that demon out of that kid? Why couldn't we do that? But then... They're afraid to ask him, can you, can you explain in maybe smaller words than the little words you're already using what you're talking about? We, we don't understand what you're trying to say. See, in one case, in one case, they thought they knew what they were doing. They thought they had power and authority. Jesus had given them that. They had experienced that. So they're operating in their own experience and they're frustrated because they couldn't do today what they could do a week ago. It didn't work the same way. They're frustrated. Why can't we do that? Focus. It's on them. Why weren't we able? Because Jesus was able. He proved it. And his answer, of course, again is sometimes it takes a little more effort than just saying the words, waving the wand, doing the thing. This one only comes out with prayer and fasting. And then, and then he reveals to them this very, very important truth. He tells them point blank, but it doesn't match up to their expectations. It doesn't sound like what they want to happen. It doesn't sound like what they think is going to happen. See, they're still convinced that Jesus is going to go kick the Romans out, take Jerusalem back, set himself up on the throne of David, and they're all going to be chiefs in the court of the king. And that's not what's going to happen. He's going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They're going to kill him. And after he's dead, he's going to rise on the third day, just like he says right here in verse 31 of Mark chapter 9. And they just shake their heads. Yeah, 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 sure, okay but they don't understand, and they're afraid to ask. How often are we afraid to talk to God because we don't want the answer? 
how often are we afraid to come to Christ and, and bear our hearts, really actually be brutally honest with him and with ourselves? because we just don't want to hear what we know we're going to hear. How often does God surprise us? Does Jesus not conform to our prepackaged ideas of what he's supposed to be like? How often do we get frustrated in our walk of faith because our walk of faith doesn't work the way we suppose it's going to? Think these are really, really important things for us to understand. It's very easy for us to go to God and say, tell me why I can't figure this out. I've got a problem. Fix my problem. Oh God, I have issues. Fix my issues. But then he begins revealing truth. And it's a lot of times truth that we don't want to see. We're not comfortable Sometimes the truth is about ourselves or our loved ones or just the world around us. And we're very uncomfortable with truth. We're a lot more comfortable with our own abilities and able, ability to control our situations. Friends, we have no control over the truth. It is. The truth is, Jesus Christ is the king. And he's the one in control. And when he says, this is what's going to happen, it's what's going to happen, whether we like it or not. So we need to get comfortable with truth, even when we don't like what it reveals. I'll be back. See you then. I hope you're enjoying this Bible study, this quick devotion. If you'd like more content, you'd like to know more about me and see more of the things that I'm doing, check out my website, theeclecticmonk.com. There you'll find out about my video vlog, my podcast, and a whole lot of other stuff. Hope you'll join me there. Thanks.